It's time for the penultimate episode of Par. And this one is called Time's Up. But who will the time be up for, guys? Let's find out. Let's dive into it. And we kick off the episode with a, a montage about Thomas Egan. He is absolutely getting read his rights, so to speak. He's going through his rights. He's getting stripped. He's getting cavity searches. You one ugly motherfucker. And the person who called him an ugly motherfucker was quite ugly themselves, which I thought was quite funny. Um... But yeah, he's just he's adjusting to prison life, and you know what? I actually I was I was thinking here, maybe Thomas big maybe big Tommy Thomas Patrick Egan's gonna get like six years rammed up his arse soon. You could spend like the next two or three seasons in jail. I was wrong, but his lawyer, of course, is the guy that Ghost hired last time, and it was an interesting seeing the court battle here between um, Angela Sachs and uh, the lawyer and Tommy I enjoyed this scene but he's not he's been rejected bail so yeah not looking good for him obviously but I kind of guessed at this point that it would be looking a wee bit better um, Tasha then finds out but everyone getting arrested she's like where the fuck is Ghost and obviously with everything closing in here we've got Tasha Coming up with a master plan she's like Sean me and you need to leave so it looks like Tasha's going to leave with Sean at the end of this episode <laughs> like I feel like with a show, they're kind of just throwing shit against the wall and hoping it sticks sometimes. I mean, is it entertaining? Yes, but I feel like the storylines are all over the place at points. Even though, like, it's a, it's a weird way to describe it. Like, the, the main storyline that basically every character's involved with, but how they get to the end is just a bit of a fucking mess, to be honest. It really is. Um, and you know what? I'm honestly getting sick of, of Ghost. And Angela, yeah, you know, I, I really, really am. Um, Sean then sits down with Kanan. Uh, he's like, All right, you're going to drive a ghost down this alleyway, you're going to drop him with the silencer on, and no one will see the flash because you're in the SUV with the big tent at windows. Then you've got to drive over here and we'll get rid of the body. And you know, <sighs> no, I no, I don't like about this, right. I like TV shows when a hit is ordered, and you genuinely believe that. The person who the hit is ordered on has a realistic chance of dying. I just knew that Ghost wasn't going to die here. I, I just knew he wasn't going to die. And you just knew it was going to blow back and blow up in Sean's lap. And uh, spoiler alert, that's exactly what happens. Tasha confronts Ghost and obviously ain't happy about the proceedings. He's like, oh, you've got to trust me. Everything that's happening with Tommy is going to go according to plan. Will this go according to plan? Who knows? Um, Ghost then walks in to truth and... He's digging up dirt on Stern. How's that going to go? Tune back in the finale, because I certainly do not care about it in the L slightest. Um, but yeah, then we have everyone meeting. We've got the Serb meeting with Ken, and they're like, oh, well, you, you promised us that Ghost would be dead, but now, now our connection, now this, the, the link up, now the pipeline, and Lobo's, he's also in jail. So how's this going to work? Kaden, obviously his master plan has came crashing to the ground with all these crews. Um this point so we're intriguing to see where all this is going to go down uh kenan then rings sean you know kind of huh, you're going to kill ghost man um but at this point he doesn't do it he says he can't do it it's a no go go have to try again can't kill him can't kill ghost kenan disappointed at this um so yeah it's time for plan b motherfucker uh and then we see the interrogation we have sax with greg's grilling tommy but obviously he's not going to give up lobos but then they bring in his mum for emotional leverage doesn't really give much away this does it like i mean it's just kind of she, like she's like we're gonna take away the fucking house i mean she doesn't do a good case for tommy but realistically like where, where was this ever going to end um but ghost is obviously cooking something here and what he's cooking is is the drawn um photo id from ruiz's daughter and he is going to give that up to his evidence and therefore obviously Testimony from an unlawful 14-year-old girl giving up Tommy. It just seems like prejudice, doesn't it? They're trying to shaft, they're trying to figure Tommy. And that's what happens here. That is exactly what Ghost does. Um, Angela confronts Tommy and says, I don't know why Ghost is doing all this for you. Um, well, he says, I don't know why James is doing all this for you. Do you really know him, Angela? And she's like, yeah, he wants you alive. I don't know why you're a two-bit criminal. Never liked each other sort of shit. I almost got the impression here that like Tommy slept with Angela before Ghost. Like that's kind of what the five it was giving me, especially when she screamed at him. But turns out he gets acquitted and he's able to go home. Angela then confronts Ghost about this. Like, how the fuck could you do this to me? And at this point, this is when she, I guess you could say, like a hundred 
and 10% confirmation finding out that Angela is in fact um, find, found out that Ghost is James or James is Ghost, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Ghost is in, in truth. He goes through the back way and then who confronts him? It's Sean at gunpoint. Um, Sean's like, you can't look after Tasha. You're never there. You're cheating on her. You jobbed out my dad. You, you sent him for 10 years in the can. Yada, yada, yada. James like, no real father would tell his son to do this. Now, they've alluded to quite a lot in this episode that Kanan isn't actually Sean's dad, or is it just a case of Kanan doesn't give a fuck about his son, he's just in life for himself? I think it might be that. Um, and, you know, the next couple of events that happen after this are pretty mental, but essentially what happens is Ghost gets the upper hand on Sean and tells him to run, tells him to be free. You know, I'll actually say, I'll say fair, fair play to... um. Ghost here, he had, he had all, he was within his rights to kill him. He, he absolutely was. Greg then confronts Angela and it looks like these two are going to team up to bring down Ghost. She's like, you outsmarted me, man. Oh, we have to work together to bring him down. Ghost then picks up Tommy from outside the, um, the prison. So Tommy's free. Tasha is wondering where Sean is. Sean! Makes one wee pit stop though. He confronts Kane and he's like, the whole reason you want me to get close to the ghost is because you wanted to kill him. You were using me, Dad. He's like, he's right about you. You're not a father. And like, you know what? See Kane, he's not, he's not going to win any father of the year rewards, right? But at the end of the day, can he not see, even if he even admits to using Sean, he's like, yeah, I did it before you get close. We get info on ghost, blah, 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 whatever. But how can Sean really take Ghost's side over this? They're, I mean, Kanan are both criminals. I think Kanan's more worse, like, morally. But at the end of the day, like, Kanan's your dad, and here you are. It's almost like he's fucking taking the side. Like, he is taking the side of Ghost. And then he's like, you're not my father. And then Kanan's like, Sh shoots him. He's like, yeah, you're not. You're damn right. You're not my fucking son. You're weak. You're no son of mine. I'm fucking proud of you being my boy. Shoots him in the stomach. Sean's bleeding out, and I'm thinking, right, is Ken just going to leave him here to bleed out? Is he going to ring for an ambulance? No, he fucking shoots him in the head like, you ain't no fucking son of mine. And he's absolutely just dropped Sean. Now, is it going to come out that he's not actually his son or something? Or, or, or what's going on here? Because this is fucking crazy that he's actually killed his son. That he would go to this... I mean, I like the, the Ken and character. I love 50 Cent, but... To me, this is almost like show. But a guy would he would kill his own son, like, it, and you know, it's not even like Alvarez and Sons where he he, he gives the okay because his son fucked up. Here he is. He, he shoots his son, who's not even in this life, really. Like, like his son botched, and he shoots his son in the stomach. The fucking shoots him in the head. It's a bit weird, but you know what? This episode was alright. I'll, I'll give it a seven out of ten. It was action packed and. It left on a cliffhanger, like, what the fuck is going to happen, guys? But anyway, didn't see much of Lobos in jail, so we'll see some of that in the finale. But yeah, guys, it's a 7 out of 10 for me. Until next time, peace.